Today is my friend Zach's birthday, and before I go out and get him his gift and bring him his gift via bike, which is actually quite big, let's talk about how to carry stuff on a fixed gear. On a truly minimal fixed gear bike, you only have what is absolutely necessary to make the bike go. But because fixed gears are so simple, that also means that there aren't very many options when it comes to carrying stuff on a fixed gear. In my six years of commuting rain or shine, grocery shopping, and touring, I've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work when it comes to carrying stuff on a fixed gear. So, here is how to carry stuff on a fixed gear. This video is made possible by Chrome Industries. After you're done watching this video, you can hop on over to Chrome's site and get 10% off of Chrome's indestructible bags by using my promo code ZACHG10. Again, thank you to Chrome for making this video possible. Unless you're just biking around the block to your nana and grandpappy's house, you're probably going to need to carry stuff when you ride. Unless your nana and grandpappy are like mine, and will load you up with a box of mangoes and a watermelon for you to take home. How you carry stuff on your bike influences how much you can carry, what you carry, how comfortable you are carrying that stuff, and ultimately, how much you enjoy riding your bike. There's pros and cons for each carrying method, and none of them are perfect. Each carrying method is a compromise between convenience, comfort, carrying capacity, style, and handling. There's two main buckets when it comes to carrying stuff on your bike. The first is carrying your load on your bike, and the second is carrying it on your body. You can carry your stuff on your bike by putting it in a basket or putting it in panniers and attaching it to a rack or attaching it straight to the rack with bungee cords. Front baskets add a lot of utility to your bike since you could just throw stuff in it. Once I put a basket on my bike, I don't know how I ever lived without one since it's so convenient to just be able to take off my jacket and throw it in the front basket or to access snacks while I'm riding. A front basket also allowed me to carry bulky groceries and to not crush all of my eggs on the way home. Similarly, you can use a porter rack and bungee cords for a little bit more carrying capacity and flexibility. The trade-off with having a front load, whether that's through a rack or with a basket, is that it makes your handling a bit slower. Probably the most popular carrying method for tourers and commuters are rear racks and panniers. For us fixed gear riders, it may be difficult to mount a rear rack to our bikes, since fixed gears often don't include the eyelets necessary to mount a rear rack, and the aggressive geometry with shorter chainstays makes heel clearance with panniers too tight for comfort. I used to ride with a rear rack and panniers, but I've since ditched them. While this setup has a very large carrying capacity and is the most comfortable, it made my bike handle terribly, to say the least. Having the weight carried over the rear wheel made climbing such a slog. The weight on the rear made my bike flex in weird ways, and it would feel jerky with each pedal stroke during climbs, and occasionally at starts I would accidentally pop a wheelie. I would often get speed wobbles and have to descend slower than I'd like. It felt like I had to fight my bike whenever I rode it, so I ditched the rack and panniers. On a fixed gear, you have to rely more on your handling than you would compared to a geared bike. You have to weave your way up some climbs. You have to mash in your one gear ratio at starts to keep up with traffic. And if you're riding brakeless, your bike needs sharp, predictable handling so you don't end up on someone's windshield. That's why for fixed gear riders, carrying your stuff on your back is by far the most popular option since it allows you to have the handling characteristics that you need on your fixed gear. This way, we have ultimate convenience for accessing things with a messenger bag, or if your loads are a bit bigger and you need more stability, a backpack will do the trick. Messenger bags and backpacks are a nice middle ground for carrying capacity, and will be great for most riding needs without being overly heavy. The trade-off with messenger bags and backpacks is one, having to deal with back sweat, and two, potentially being uncomfortable by having to carry your weight on your back and on your shoulders. But depending on which bag you choose, soreness might not even be an issue. With that, here are the important qualities to look for when you're shopping for a messenger bag or a backpack that'll make the bag great whether you're just going out for a quick ride in the afternoon or you're spending multiple days in the saddle. The first thing that you need to decide when looking for a bag is your carrying capacity. The Chrome Messenger that I'm wearing right now has a 22 liter carrying capacity. The Chrome Barrage Cargo Backpack has a carrying capacity of 20 liters and the Chrome Welterweight could debt sling bag has a carrying capacity of 9 liters. So you need to ask yourself what are you going to use the bag for and what are you going to need to carry. The second quality to look for is the 
the design of the bag. How many bike specific features does a bag have that just make it more useful for how you're going to use it? For instance, Chrome is famous for their buckle system. This allows you to put the bag on and take it off without having to lift a heavy bag over your head. And it also comes with this underarm stabilizing strap so it doesn't swing around while you're riding. On the inside, on the left and right of this bag, there are two compartments that are the perfect size for your sports bottle. The Chrome Barrage Cargo has this nifty little side pocket where you can throw your locks into. So you don't have to rummage through your main compartment for your locks and disorganize everything just because you need to park your bike. And the Barrage Cargo's namesake comes from this cargo net. So you can carry weirdly shaped bulky items without having to sacrifice any of your main compartment's carrying capacity. And these Chrome bags also have reflective linings and stripes so you don't get hit by a car at night because that's a pretty fast way to ruin your day. When shopping for a bag, you should also look for compartments. Compartments allow you to make a more efficient use of the space that you have, and it makes it more comfortable to wear. Most Chrome bags have a U-lock compartment, and the Citizen has this cell phone compartment that perfectly and firmly holds your phone. And of course, the Barrage Cargo has a laptop compartment because that's probably the most expensive thing that you'll be carrying. The third quality to look for in a bag is the durability. When you buy something, you don't want to have to buy it again. Chrome bags are built to last literally the rest of your life with daily abuse. They were designed by messengers for messengers and nobody is harder on their stuff than bike messengers. Chrome is notorious for the durability of their bags and it's not uncommon to see somebody that has a bag that is 10 years or older. Chrome also has a lifetime warranty and they mean it. If you have any problems at all with your bag you can often just send it in and they'll fix it, and sometimes you won't even have to pay. Also, a lot of Chrome bags are made just up the street from me in Chico, California. So here are the telltale signs of whether a bag is durable. First, how many really old bags are out there? Like with Chrome, you could find 10-year-old bags and people are still going strong on them. Second, look at the little details of the bag. How perfect is the stitching? How aligned are the compartments? How does it feel? How thick is the fabric? And also, what types of fabric fabrics do they use? Chrome uses this abrasion resistant nylon with an inside tarpaulin lining for waterproofing. Which brings us to the next quality to look for. Regardless of whether you're a fair weather cyclist or not, you're going to encounter rain and you're going to have to ride in the rain. If you don't want to get your laptop wet, having a tarpaulin lined bag like Chrome does is a good way to do that. Those are the qualities that you should look for when you're shopping for a bag, but of course, having the bag means nothing if you don't pack it correctly. First, you need to decide the items that you will regularly pack. Lay out all of your stuff for your commute or your ride and see exactly what you need and exactly what you don't need. A good way to estimate how much volume you need is by taking a backpack and seeing if you could fit all the stuff that you'll need in it. Then you can take the measurements of that backpack to figure out the volume. Here's how I'll pack my stuff for a regular day of riding, writing, and shooting. So this is all of my stuff that I would need on a typical day. And it's a pretty good amount of stuff. I would estimate that it weighs about 15 to 20 pounds. So comfort will be key while I'm riding with all this stuff. And I need to pack it into this 22 liter backpack. But that won't be a problem. is most of what I need for a day of shooting, including some snacks. Everything fits in this nice and tidy package, partly because this bag has lots of compartments to keep everything nice, separate, and organized. Everything is nice and tight, nothing is going anywhere. Now, this is almost everything, except I have one problem. This is my tripod. I need this to shoot, and it doesn't look like it's going to fit inside this bag or inside the cargo. So, sometimes when you're packing, you have to get a little bit creative. When your bag is durable and when you know you can trust it and when you know that it's not going to break or anything's going to snap or the stitching's going, not going to come loose, then you can do some creative things with it. So I need this tripod with me and in order to carry it, it's not going to fit in my bag. So what I can do is take this buckle and strap it to it. I can now carry it off to the side like this when I'm riding. And this is a pretty heavy load. The straps are nice and wide for a more even weight distribution, and the sternum strap takes some of that weight off of my shoulder. 
and especially when you're riding fixed, this bag is designed to be in a more forward riding position, whereas a lot of non-bike specific backpacks will be hitting the back of your helmet when you're in a forward looking up position. Well, that's all said and good, but how much can these chrome bags actually carry? How much is that 20 to 22 liter capacity? Can I, can I come over and drop off a gift? Drop off a gift? It's, um, it's partially for a video, so there's that. <laughs> I don't actually care about you. All right, I'll see you later. Got the birthday present. It's uh, two 12 packs of beer. I don't drink that much and I don't know beer at all. So I just got the one with the bike on it. And the point of this present was to illustrate how much this messenger bag can carry and what it looks like when it's full. But I guess a 24 pack of beer isn't enough and I could easily fit another 12 pack in here. With 24 cans of beer on my back, it's actually surprisingly comfortable. This uh, Citizen's nice and thick strap is keeping the weight evenly distributed and the nice thing about messenger bags is that since they pack flat instead of up like a backpack you distribute the weight all over your back so it is pretty dang comfortable Yeah, it was, it was. So that's how to carry stuff on your fix here. And if you're in the market for a bag that you'll likely have for the rest of your life, do check out the Chrome link in the description and get 10% off your order with my promo code ZACHG10. And with that, life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.